Hey guys, uh, my name is Bruce Hoyer, and I am a black belt under uh, Rodrigo Comprido Medeiros. I've um, been training Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu for about uh, almost 15 years now, and um, I've kind of done a different way of teaching, and I want to share that with everybody. Uh, I've been kind of reluctant to bring it out there to the, to the world for the most part because I wanted to do a lot more testing on it and kind of see how my students prepare with that. Uh, but uh, at the request of a lot of my students, they think I should share it. So uh, I'm going to do that, and I would love your guys' opinions on it um, as much as possible. So um, about a year and a half ago, we switched completely the way that we, uh, or the, at least that I uh, teach classes, and it's been kind of evolving from there. Um, so typically when you go into a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu class, you're going to get you know warmed up. The instructor will go through you know three, four, five moves, and, and usually in a series. And then uh, everybody drills that, you know, and then after that, they'll roll. And, you know, that works really well. Obviously, there's a, a ton of world champions out there that do that. And then you'll see a lot of um, controversy between, okay, concept versus drilling and, and things like that. And so uh, some instructors will teach, you know, via concept and some people will teach via, uh, you know, let's go ahead and rep this particular guard pass 200 ways. Um, so what I did... Uh, like for, for me, I didn't feel like the four te the that particular training style uh, was the best possible way. Um, so I started researching a lot of um, learning resources, you know, basically how to learn. And with that, I've kind of started uh, changing the way uh, that I've uh, been teaching. And I tried to do it as best as possible that I kept, you know, a control group of, okay, I'm going to show these guys um, four techniques each time. We're going to drill those and then kind of uh, lay a foundation that way. And then I had a group uh, that learned uh, the new way that I'm going to talk about. And it was night and day. So uh, I feel like for me, that that's the way that I'm going to continue to teach. Um, I know that a lot of people that I've discussed it with have thought that I'm absolutely crazy. So here we go. Um, everybody that learns from me is taught uh, basically uh, individualized lesson plan. So what do I mean by that? Let me go to um, here. So if you notice, I have a curriculum of one class um, to about 250 uh, that are on here. And then there's a bunch of other stuff. There's testing and combinations and things like that. Um, and so each person, when they come in, uh, we use Evernote. And like I said, it's, I'm basically throwing everything out there um, for you guys to be able to see. So uh, I imagine you know some gyms will start. Uh, copying this and that's kind of I mean if, if you do that's great um, if you can see a lot of these guys have you know class 91 95 all these are individualized so every day they come in um, it's an individual class so you're essentially learning four techniques and so what the nice thing is is that I've videotaped myself doing you know four of these techniques so take for instance class number 20 uh, four half guard positions, just different uh, situations, and then um, three of these are techniques like old school sweep, sweeping off the wizard, and then taking the back from like a knee shield position. Um, so those kind of all go in line together, and then here is the video of me teaching that particular technique. What I ask my student to do is actually review those techniques um, beforehand. Let me just go ahead and do this here real quick. Boom. There we go. Um, what I ask my students to do beforehand is to actually review those. And one of the nice things that we're going to be adding uh, to the program is it's, in my opinion, ever evolving. It's never going to be uh, a perfect system. Um, is we're actually going to also do this two different ways. So this is a video or a YouTube video, and um, we're going to also be adding. Uh, text if you will so you'll be able to read this a step by step of each one of these techniques and then an audio one as well so uh, from everything that I've learned about learning the most uh, retention that you're going to get is by fitting it in as many ways as possible by watching it by reading it by listening to it all sorts of things so as much um, as many senses as you can get in there the better it's going to be learned so that's it so say this person does class number 20 which they did um, then the next time they come in, they're going to get class number 21. So if you notice, here's the four techniques. It's uh, four half guard positions, old school sweep, 
uh, sweep off the wizard, taking the bat. Now, say they, that person learned that on a Monday and they come in on a Wednesday like today. Um, they're going to learn those four half guard positions because this one's kind of a bad lesson plan to, uh, to show uh, because that isn't going to be the case for all of them. But uh, they learn the, review those four half guard positions. And then what I'm asking them to do here is go from side control, get into uh, half guard, and then do uh, old school sweep. So we're starting to associate um, positions, not just doing the, the position blindly. We're taking it one step back. So um, another case, you know, from half guard going into, uh, or excuse me, going from side control, getting into half guard, and then from half guard doing the like a sweep off of a wizard where they wizard down hard and you roll backwards. Uh, the fourth one that we're doing is, you know, side control escape, same thing, getting into half guard and then taking the back from there. So um, that's the, the second class is taking something and associating with the thing before it. So let me find another example here. Uh, say like this, class number nine is rear naked choke. So for class number 10, they're going to be in mount and then they're going to go ahead and, and take the back from mount. So get the position uh, in it, class number 10 for the most part it's the other person rolling and then them seeing that and being able to go to the back because they've only done 10 classes it's not going to be super um, you know they're not going to have quite developed uh, a good skill of taking the back yet from mount uh, but the the idea starts to become there and they start to associate okay this person's turtling well I can go for a rear naked choke um, then the basic hip escape from mount um, and then a takedown from uh, standing and then a grace guard pass. So maybe they do a takedown into the guard and then immediately start going for the guard pass. I'm just trying to set up some form of association between the moves so that way uh, one of two things. You can uh, start to associate, okay, I'm going to do this takedown and immediately go for this guard pass, which is great. You start to chain things together. And then two, I'm not asking them to do a certain technique. I'm saying you can do any takedown that will land you in the guard and then you can do a pass. So they have to sit there and recall uh, a takedown that they've learned before that will land them inside the guard. Um, and the, the, the nice part is that, like you're constantly testing yourself as far as memory. So that's kind of a nice part. Um, and that for the most part is the the bread and butter of it. Now the uh, if you notice class number 9 and 10 uh, they're pretty much the same but you're adding something to it. If you notice we'll go down to class number 17. Now you're reviewing that for a third time, but if you notice, now you're doing rear naked choke and you're doing something after it. So maybe I try to do rear naked choke and it doesn't work, so I go to a short choke or uh, you know, like a lapel choke, things like that. So now instead of associating one move behind it, I'm associating one move uh, after it. And so if you want to, and, and the, I encourage my students to do this, if you want to do the full entire chain, that's great. You know, so like um, person starts to mount, I take their back, I rear naked choke them, oh, that doesn't work, I'm gonna go to a short choke. So, and then you'll see here too, basic hip escape from mount, uh, once you get to the guard from mount, or from being mounted, then maybe go for a sweep after that, or a grace of guard pass, I go into a transition into mount, or maybe I go for a submission from side control, whatever it is, I, and I, I really don't care, I want them to build uh, their game plan off of that, but it's uh, allowing them to recall Oh crap, I need to remember a submission from side control. And so every time I'm testing that person, um, it makes that a little bit uh, firmer, if you will, or the, the, the recall is a little bit quicker. Everything that I've learned uh, about, and I'm going to bring this up a bunch, uh, learning is, okay, if I just repeatedly throw this at this person, they'll uh, probably get really good at the drill of it. But when it comes to actually recalling it, especially underneath uh, anxiety like rolling and com competition, it's not going to be there. Um, so that's a, a good portion of it is if I can show them moves and then constantly test them on those moves, that's great. The other thing is, is um, with individualized lesson plans, I can have different uh, variants of learning, right? So somebody over here can be learning uh, reverse daily HIVA, and this happens all the time, uh, Rever learning reverse daily HIVA. Well, this person is just learning a regular guillotine because they've only been here for, you know, five, ten classes. Um, so, and those two can intermingle. And what's great is we usually do it um, two ways. So our, our class typically runs, um, like I said, one of two ways. You'll see 
um, a sheet up here. This is one of the class uh, formats that I have. This is a, a good uh, portion of who I might have for the class. So if you notice, I'll have a bunch of classes set up here. Um, and so regular class, morning class, late class, uh, beginners class, things like that. Um, and I should say this, I actually kind of got rid of the beginners class because I don't really need it anymore because everybody's learning beginning stuff when they first start. But I still have a quote unquote a beginners class that I call the beginners class uh, just because for marketing reasons people feel more comfortable coming into a beginners class when they're a beginner. Um, but it's the same thing. The uh, Anyways, I have this. These are the people that I expect to show up on this particular uh, time frame of class. And sometimes they'll show up, sometimes they won't, no big deal. And then we can plug in real quick uh, people from there. So say, um, let me go on here, let me say, say Levi comes in. You know, if I need to and he's not on that sheet, I can grab those four real quick. Go here, copy, boom, bring it over here. I think he's already on there, but I would just say, boom, Levi, and add it. As they're doing the warm-ups, things like that, it only takes me a few seconds, and I can add everybody. The tough part about it is you have to remember everybody's name, but you're their instructor, so you should know that already. Okay, so the two ways um, that I do it, like you said, is through here, is um, one way is I do groups of three, and they drill for eight minutes a piece. So that group of three, essentially, say it's me, person A, person B. I will drill it with person A two times, person B two times, and then uh, person A will do it on me two times, they'll do it on uh, person B two times, and then person B will do it on me and person A two times. So you're going back and forth like that. The reason that we do three people is I try to always put uh, a high rank person uh, with uh, two lower rank people for the most part, or you know if it ends up being two high rank people and then one lower rank person, uh, so be it. But you get a, a sense of um, recalling. So say I can't for the, you know, I do a guard pass, but then for the life of me, I can't think of how to do a submission from side control. Two of those other people should know uh, a submission from side control. I'm basically just pulling for more uh, knowledge. And then it also helps that the person, maybe a blue, purple, or brown belt, um, is going to know a little bit, so they'll be able to refine the technique as I walk around. So it's weird. I don't actually teach much anymore I just kind of facilitate learning if you will so it's kind of funny um, you know if somebody didn't look at the lesson plan and they have no idea what they're doing usually they're gonna that blue belt or you know higher rank person will be able to show them quick uh, or I can as well you know it's not such a big deal so I try to separate into groups of three and then they drill each move you'll, you'll see four moves sometimes you'll see little gaps here um, and then that allows them to drill anything else uh, for the most part it's uh, a space in the curriculum that they're allowed to kind of work on stuff that they want to work on. Um, sorry, you didn't actually see that. Let me switch. Okay, right here. So like there's a little um, gap where there's uh, this particular gentleman, Kyle, has no techniques for his uh, third and fourth round. Um, that's good because it allows him to say, hey, I want to work on this or I want to work on that. Okay, so with... Uh, with that being said, that works great. Uh, groups of three, um, everybody gets a good amount of drilling in, and there's enough knowledge base there that they should be able to help out each other very well. Um, and sometimes you'll end up with odd numbers, so then you just have groups of two, which is is no big deal. Um, a lot of times, if you can put uh, enough uh, really good instructors around or really good uh, guys around, then have two more experienced guys that can go back and forth. Uh, drill rather than two brand new people uh, because then the, there'll be a lot of confusion there. Um, so that's pretty much it. My second option that I do that I really like, um, we call it Big Spoon, Little Spoon, but honestly you could call it Group A, Group B. Um, as the class gets started, as you're uh, shaking everybody's hands, you just say you're Group A, Group B, Group A, Group B, and you just go down the line um, that way. And you want it this way. You want people of varying uh, skills and abilities and you want people of varying sizes. <clears throat> and essentially what you do is you uh, do a big circle with group A, and then group B uh, will grab a partner from group A, and you'll drill the move twice, and then everybody uh, circles to the, in group B, uh, circles counterclockwise or clockwise, doesn't really matter, uh, 
to the next person, right? And so they'll drill it with that person, and then the next person they'll drill it with that person. The great part about that is you never have a crappy training partner that doesn't know what they're doing. Um, for for one, you you'll have it for two two reps, and then you switch. And then again, we'll do this for four minutes, and then group A rotates around in a big circle. We'll do the move twice, go to the next one, do the move twice, go to the next one, do the move twice. Great part about it, um, I can sit down as an instructor if I want and have the people do it on me twice, and I'm not really affecting uh, anything by having both groups do that, right? The nice part is, too, that it creates a little bit more distance in those two groups, and so everybody can uh, keep going at a pretty good pace um, of drilling it twice. Um, you get a little bit of knowledge base from everybody that's going around there as far as like a white belt. Maybe they're just starting out and like, ah, I kind of suck at this, or maybe uh, they haven't learned that technique very well. Everybody kind of gets to touch on in the their knowledge of, of that technique and you say, okay, go ahead and fix this or do that, do this. Um, so that's one really good thing. You don't, like I said, you're changing up and varying um, who you're getting to go with, their size, their, their skill level, everything like that. So that's really good because everything I've, I've heard of, I don't want to have static uh, repping where it's always the same variable or like uh, it's always the same case. I want variables where, okay, this guy's bigger now, so I need to know what to do to change or he's smaller or whatever. Um, so and people move differently. The other great thing is that as people are moving through, um, white belts, higher belts, lower belts, or excuse me, everybody for the most part is getting a lot of reference of positions of what to do things like that so yeah they're not necessarily drilling say a deep half guard sweep or something like that but um, that white belt after about a week even if they're brand new I thought this would take months but it actually only takes about a week of or say like seven practices of people going through stuff for them to be like uh, say a purple or a brown belt to come up there and be like okay um, you're in deep half this time and the person just be like Bloop, and put themselves uh, you know opponent directly in deep half or reverse daily heave things like that which is awesome because then when that person does it say deep half or say does any of those techniques they're going to already have a base of knowledge like maybe they haven't repped the technique and they don't know the fine details but they have a gross motor function of like okay I think I need to do this and then you're just chipping away at the the finer details and so for for me that's huge um, like and like I said I was really surprised at the fact that I like I said it was I thought it was going to take months if somebody new was coming in and I was just like okay you're going to go ahead and get in reverse de la Hiva or combat stance or something like that and people after a couple couple reps you know five six seven classes all of a sudden they're like oh yeah i'll just go ahead and get into leg lasso or reverse daily heba or whatever and they just understood it which is crazy to me um so that's pretty much uh, most of you know my classes um i really like it i think it's uh, an awesome thing one thing i'll say is everybody uh, i had to come up with my own curriculum and i like it and it's been through uh, I don't know how many different variations of my curriculum, and I think it'll, it'll, like I said, probably always be evolving. The one tough thing for me is the the way I feel like it should be, in my opinion, is white belt should be kind of a mix of all over, right? So you're kind of learning things all over, because if you just sit there and you learn guard passes for five or six classes, um, then that person isn't starting to pull from, from different areas. Um, they're learning a chain of techniques, but then you're running the risk of running into so many classes that somebody's 30 or 40 classes in and they haven't even learned how to do, you know, like a basic back escape. So for me, if you'll see a lot of them, they're um, a little bit from everywhere. So yes, it doesn't seem like a chain of stuff, but that's where um, those, you know, drills start to come in where, okay, you're doing a, a guillotine, boom, that doesn't work, you're going for a takedown or a prayer choke or whatever. You're starting to associate those and create uh, frames of reference for yourself. And if you notice, I'll do some combinations as well. And then the other big thing is uh, testing, right? So, like, I'll get to, like, certain points like this where you'll see all these, right? And this is something that we're going to be uh, changing as well. Um, we haven't started doing this yet, but within the next probably week or so, I'm going to start doing this. Um, sorry. Ah, I forget that you guys can't see that. Now you can see it. Um, all these techniques. 
what we're going to do is um, instead of person drilling one time, I'm just going to have them go around and, you know, either in that group of three or um, group, uh, you know, group A, group B, uh, recall each one of these techniques once. And if you can recall it fairly easily, great. Um, and then I don't have to worry about it. If you don't recall it very well, what we're going to do is we're going to take a break from the curriculum, say, you know, okay, this next class 20 or whatever, and we'll hold off on that for a little bit. I'll bunch together all of the techniques um, that you didn't remember very well, and the next two classes kind of go over those again and see how they are. And then, again, if you notice, like, say this was class 20 or whatever, then you'll review again at, like, say, class 55. Um, uh, where are you at? Um, then you get to go through those again, and hopefully they've uh, kind of cemented themselves in your brain. If they haven't, then again, you can break away from the class curriculum and just work with them on problem areas that they're having or ones that they're not able to recall. So uh, kind of nice that way. The other thing is, too, is that since it's this way, say you have a really good wrestler. Well, like This is a good example. Say you have a really good wrestler, national champion wrestler, or you wrestled for a long time. Um, ankle picks and duck unders and things like that that are basic wrestling things that he's done since he was four years old, I can just throw that class out because he doesn't need to worry about that. He already has that knowledge, and so I'm not going to waste his time in, in learning um, in things like that where it's, you know, basic stuff that he's known since uh, his entire life. So you can just go, instead of doing class 53 and 54, uh, this, again, is not a great example because there's a couple things that I want people to learn uh, there. But um, you can essentially take those things out. Or if you just want to have them drill it to drill it, you certainly can. Um, you'll also notice that underneath the video of myself doing it, there's always videos, uh, for the most part, on every other class of things that I want people to know. So uh, taught by other instructors on, on YouTube or maybe it's a book reference, things like that. So... Um, the I think that's um, pretty much it. Most people will say you know say this is a ton of work, um, but it's really not. The nice part is is that okay, I had like today I had 22 people for class. All I have to do is I have to go in here. Um, sometimes I'll make the names red um, on a you know an Excel spreadsheet or a Google uh, sheet. Um, or for the most part, I should be able to remember who was actually in class that day. Um, so at the end of the day. I will just go in here and I'll say, okay, um, Able did class. I'll just go up to here, boom, click on Able. And this, you can see this, he's having a problem with Mount right now, so there's a couple of escapes that he wants to do. Um, but he was on class, say, 37, and he did class today. I would just go class 37, boom, go to here, class 38, um, highlight it copy, paste, um, and then that would be it. And then I would put, actually, I'll just do it now. Um, and then I'll delete it. So class 38, boom. And then take this, go in here, and then change it to that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and delete this now. But as you see, it took me, you know, I was explaining it as well, and it took me maybe 40 seconds. So you figure 20 people for class, that's going to take you 10, 15 minutes. Um, and everybody's like, oh man, that's going to take forever. It really doesn't as long as um, you have your, um, you know, your curriculum set up and you can just copy and paste and then vary from there. Um, so like I said, it's super easy that way. And I don't have to think about what I'm going to teach that day. I'm just facilitating what the curriculum already tells me to teach, right? So I don't have to sit there for 45, 50 minutes and come up with a, uh, a lesson plan and, and figure out how... Uh, it should connect with what I was teaching last week and things like that. It's already done. It's already figured out. Um, actually, let me go back. One other thing that I was going to talk about uh, before with the white belt. It's kind of, like I said, all scattered all over the place. Um, once you get to um, blue belt and things like that, we go over a lot more um, systems, so you know how to escape spider guard or, or how to pass spider guard, things like that, reverse daily heva situations, things like that. So, um, because then you've you've built up a base and you have a general reference. Um, I was showing you, but then again, I forget to 
switch it over. So, you know, this is all kind of all over the place for the most part, and then you start getting into situations where here you're re uh, learning reverse daily heva, or maybe you're doing Baron Bolo stuff, things like that. So it's more systems, again, than um, kind of all over the place. But like I said, you have a general reference that if you were to go out there and, and train, um, you would actually be able to uh, call from it rather than, I have no idea what I'm doing in this particular position. So uh, that's it for the most part. Um, let me know what you guys think. I think uh, the system's really good, and I'm, I'm going to continue to do with it. Um, what I will and evolve it and things like that. But let me know what you guys think. It's uh, um, something. It's a very near and dear baby to, to my heart. Like I said, I really like it. So, um, and, and the students absolutely love it. They feel like they're constantly evolving uh, because they can they can look at it and say, okay, I've gone through all this stuff, and it, everything just kind of flows together. So, um. Like I said, let me know what you think. I'm super interested, and uh, if anybody else that you know of is doing anything remotely close to this, let me know. I would love to share notes with them um, and kind of go from there. And if you guys do end up wanting to use it, by all means, let me know, um, and I would be more than happy to help you guys uh, set something up like that at your gym. There's a small uh, window of setting up time. I mean, because obviously you're going to have to videotape a lot of techniques. You're going to have to do um, all that, but... Trust me, in my opinion, it's way worth it. And for retention, it's huge because pretty much every student feels like they're getting a, a personalized uh, program, which they kind of are. So, and that, the actually, let me touch on this for two seconds too. Feel free to, uh, if you start to use it, you know, say you're doing class 20 and a student's getting ready for competition or something like that, um, you can take five, six, seven classes very off of the the lesson plan and work on you know competition strategy and things like that for them and then once they're done with their competition whoop, you're right back into that curriculum so um, it's nice because it it's ever evolving and then also it's nice because you can stop and then uh, restart the program anytime so let me know what you think